Today we are going to be doing just some routine maintenance on this 2015 Chevy Malibu LT. This does have the 2.5 in it and that does make a difference. We are doing the brakes. If you have the 2 liter turbo, you're going to need the bigger brakes. The 2015's had the 2.5 in them, had the smaller brakes. I think it was like the J20 or something. I can't remember exactly what that was called. But they ask you whether you have the big brakes or the small brakes. The 2.5 has the small brakes and the 2 two liter turbo has the big brakes so first things first as always jack up the car in the front since we'll do that first and get your uh jack stands under the car set your parking brake etc so i'm going to do that real quick and we'll come back taking the wheels off and then we'll start taking a look at the calipers so the wheels are off and the rotors feel okay don't mind the red it's just because it's been sitting for about a week with rain on it the rotors don't feel gouged hopefully they can still be turned there was a little bit of life left. I don't know if we can see. There was just a little bit of life left in these pads. The passenger side was just shot. So what we gotta do is get the caliper off. And we have two 14 millimeter bolts that hold on the caliper and i'm hoping we don't have to take the caliper bracket off but just in case we do 21 millimeter for the back so let's knock these two bolts off real quick and we'll need to get some pliers and gently squeeze the piston back in to the main housing of the caliper so we can get the new pads on so a little trick to uh, squeeze the piston back in there i usually use channel locks to do it but my channel locks weren't quite big enough so I got one of my larger screwdrivers and slid it in between the rotor, which we want to try to turn, and the brake pad that we're replacing. And I've been prying against the piston like this, and that has pushed the piston back into its furthest in neutral setting and I always hang my caliper from a wire or something I don't like letting it hang on the brake lines so another thing I did to try to help with that I removed the cap so it didn't get a, a uh, air pressure build up in there because we're squeezing the brake fluid back up into the reservoir so I'm gonna loosely put this on because we're gonna have to do it to that side and then that side and then that side so once you get that tied up out of the way, we pull the brake pads off and they very simply just slide out of there. And we've got these new clips too, so we take these off too. And I've already loosened them, but I put one back on so you can see where it was. So we've already run into a problem. Uh, the rotor is rusted to the hub, which I was half expecting, but hoping it wouldn't happen. Uh, I cannot foresee the rotor coming off without removing the caliper clamp. So we are gonna need the 21 millimeter to get these two bolts out and remove that. And I'm pr probably gonna get a wood block and a hammer and see if I can knock this loose. If not, we'll have to get the torch and put some heat to it. So after cursing it, shitty internet not working and YouTube being a piece of garbage and hitting on it with a hammer and block of wood, I noticed this little fella. helps when you're not fucking retarded so that's everything off of this side i've already loaded the rotors in the back of the truck to go have them turned i just go to my local o'reilly's and this is the passenger side and it comes off exactly the same way that's why i didn't show it two caliper bolts squeeze the piston back in i used my screwdriver pull the brake pads off then the two 21 millimeters for the caliper bracket pull them off and then the little torx bolt here that held the rotor on and pull that off so 
there's the extent of it and you can see it was due that's the front of the pad no wonder she heard a metal on metal i should have changed them a long time ago but the back side you can see where i was prying against it but other than that it still had a little bit of life left in the pad but anyway i'm gonna go take these rotors to o'reilly's hopefully they can be turned they've never been off of this car that i know of and it's got 130,000 on it now but hopefully hopefully they can be turned and we won't have to spend another 200 dollars on rotors so we'll come back when we start installing these these brakes on this oh that was a mess the guy was super nice but it took us forever but we're just gonna reassemble put these back on the way they were please make sure you get the right rotors they were out of spec for me so I had to just buy new ones and when you buy the pads and rotors you get a discount at O'Reilly's so if I had to have them turned it actually would have cost me ten dollars more than just buying the rotors so anyway we're going to go ahead and start reassembling everything put our this craftsman ratchet is such a piece of shit all right so we need to torque this down and start putting all of our caliper back on uh, i need to go get my caliper grease and uh let's see here here's the correct pads for us this will have, these do have the angled thing but whatever i'm not concerned new clips and we do need to remember to take this off the back of the pad because this is what the piston pushes against on the pad so we do need that all right so let me go get my caliper grease and start getting torque figures so i have a tendency to put caliper grease on everything so i put it on the back of the piston where it pushes against this plate this is a plate i was talking about and your uh that little clip whatever you want to call that is the back side and when you put these clips on i also put grease on those hopefully i can do this one-handed but usually not there we go there's one and then the front side there we go so there's that and then the caliper is just going to sit right back on top of it so make sure your piston squeezed all the way in and it should sit right over it and then we're going to put our two bolts back in there we have it that's the front make sure everything's back on good torque it if you need to especially your back caliper bracket bolts and your caliper bolts so everything's back to spec everything's good and tight don't forget your little your little cute rotor bolt um you will have to pump the brakes a couple times to get the piston to take up the extra slack which we have now done everything's greased front wheels are ready to go back on this and we're gonna go pick up the back so the mo is basically the same for the back as it was the front except i am not replacing the rear rotors on this uh, this car is driven mostly on the highway so the front definitely needed it the rear i'm really not as concerned about the rotors uh, we are replacing the pads only so if you need to replace the rotors you will also have to take off your caliper bracket in the back i don't think those are 21 millimeter these are not 14 like they are on the front these are 13 because general motors hates you uh, these look to be a 17 or a 19 instead of the 21 same thing applies don't forget your little bolt if you're removing your rotor we are not um make sure that you have your jack stands under the car you don't want it falling on you it's very dangerous blah 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 and hook the battery blah 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 that i never do uh make sure you have your caliper grease and everything handy do not forget to squeeze your piston right here squeeze it back into the caliper body so we have room to actually uh, take all of this off and replace it with our new much thicker brake pads so i'm going to go ahead and unbolt this caliper squeeze the piston in and set to replace everything well like usual i'm an idiot i forgot that general motors has these stupid pistons that you have to screw back in you need a special tool fortunately i worked on a pontiac years ago and i have it still all these different little stupid ends, this special tool and crap. This is why I hate American cars. 
but you have to hold pressure on that piston screw it in and I've got it almost all the way in and we're gonna go ahead and pull the old pads off they'll come off of course they won't why would they I'm only doing it on camera right now off why won't it come off the back no way do you have to remove the caliper bolt to get those off no way Chevy would do that would they would they really fucking do that where you've got to take the caliper bracket off Surely not. Surely not. Let me look. Like with everything American made, it's a complete abortion, and you do have to take the caliper bracket off to get the freaking pads off, which is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And this is exactly why I hate General Motors. It's an 18 millimeter, which is an uncommon metric size in a box wrench that I don't even have. And you can't use a socket because the frickin knuckle bolts in the way. So you have to use a box end wrench or a crescent like me. So you have to act like a shade tree and use a frickin crescent wrench to get these off. But once you get these off, you can then get the frickin brake pad out. Absolutely ignorant, but there you go. Pretty straightforward once you get all that bullshit taken care of. Make sure you put the pad back on before you put the caliper bracket on. I've just got it sitting there loosely. These aren't even finger tight. I've just got them holding in there. Make sure you grease them real good. Uh, I'm going to bolt the caliper bracket back on. And then I need to make sure that the piston is screwed in. Right away. I got it in that far. There's still some more I could probably go in on it. But I didn't want to go in any more than absolutely necessary. So anyway, that's where we're at. I got to get back under the car, put this caliper bracket back on all the way, and get it tightened down. Do not forget to put your clips in and grease it. They sent me the wrong clips, so I'm having to reuse my old ones. So it's always a good matter of course to be checking your parts before you start ripping stuff off. In case you break it, then you're up shit creek without a paddle. So anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get this on there it's getting late and i'm getting getting sober same thing as the other side just take your two 13 millimeter bolts out of the back and move the caliper out the way again we have to use the 18 get the caliper bracket off because general motors hates consumers and wants to screw you in the back end so we have to take half the car part to get the freaking brake pads off We've also got to screw this in. Going to do that too. I'm going to rush through this as quick as I can because it's getting cold and windy. And there we go. Just in the nick of time. Almost forgot to film this part because I was so excited to wash my hands and stop working. But I've uh, got it back on the ground. You don't have to bleed the brakes or anything when you're just changing pads. You don't need to do that unless you crack a line open, which you didn't do. So just make sure that you're checking that everything is tight because this is brakes this is a safety thing so you need to be making sure that you're tightening everything appropriately now i didn't quote the torque figures because i didn't technically torque them i i've just changed this type of crap enough where i can remember how tight it was when i took it off and i put it back on the same tightness you know a couple of good grunts um just be careful and make sure that you're checking yourself and double checking yourself. You don't want something to come loose and lose your brakes on your wife's car like this is my wife's car. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope it helped you. Come on, boss! Come on! Yeah!